Hey, congratulations for it hatched. Thank you, Jake. Thank you. It's a, uh, it sure, it surely is a terrifying story. I do have to tell tell you that. <laughs> okay. 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 So it's being uh, showcased uh, here in the United States at the Austin Film Festival this year. Uh, how how do you feel about that? Uh, I feel pretty excited. I uh, am, of course, looking forward to showing it to the world. It's been a long process. And, um, and I myself really like Austin Film Festival and, uh, and I am really appreciative for the staff there. It has been excellent and so on. So we are pretty excited. Great, great. So let, let's start off with the easy question. Where did the story originate from um, for yourself? Uh, well, we, well, I had a company, a film company here in Iceland that, uh, and we did a lot of uh, production service gigs and uh, music videos, so on. And we uh, had no assignments, no projects one day. And we were just contemplating on what to do next. And, uh, well, my co-worker, he had the idea of uh, making a trailer for Kickstarter, just a crowd crowdfunding trailer, and uh, just make a crazy trailer and not necessarily make the film, just make the craziest trailer out there. And he uh, had this idea of uh, this story of a couple going to a, moving to a guest house in in the middle of nowhere in Iceland to open a guest house. And uh, then a demon would uh, start to harass them. And the uh, woman would lay an egg. And from it, a giant spider would appear from the egg, a giant spider. And I just stopped in there and said, well, wait, maybe we can uh, tweak this a bit, take out the spider and insert a little baby a human baby and see where that takes us and, and um, a few months later we were shooting a film <laughs> this this is by far one of the strangest ideas that ever came on film but um i don't know if you realize like i i couldn't stop watching you just one of those things where i just need to know what what comes next <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah. So, uh, so let, let t tell me this: where, where, where is this house in Iceland? Is it is it really that isolated? Because uh, you know, isolation itself is scary. Yeah. Um, well, this house in particular is uh, isolated in a way, not as isolated as the film proclaims. But uh, there are, of course, houses in Iceland that are as isolated as this particular house. But uh, just out of uh, just because of um, the production itself, we decided to uh, well, shoot in this particular house because it's uh, not well, not in the middle of nowhere. It's relatively close to Reykjavik. It's like a three and a half hour drive from Reykjavik, the capital, in Iceland. And they have electricity and so on, which is a big plus, of course. And uh, sort of look the part, of course. The, uh, the house does play a big role in the film. And uh, we felt comfortable with choosing that house. Uh, but no, it's not, as, it's not as remote as the film claims, no. So, uh, so for the basement, was there? Did you have to um, create a hole in the basement, or was that in the studio or somewhere else? It's uh, actually we uh, use uh, four different holes in the film for four for different angles, and uh, we um, in the basement itself we just elevated the floor a bit. And, and made like a small hole, just like a few inches deep. Um, and just did a bunch of camera tricks 
but no, we, we didn't actually make a deep hole in the basement. But yeah, uh, part of it is shot in the studio and part of it on location with a bit of fiffing. And and then um, and then and then when you did the scenes for like the, the caves, those were the natural caves around Iceland that you actually chose, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, we shot in two different caves in Iceland. Yeah, actual caves, an actual lava tube. Were those uh, challenging, especially uh, to handle the lighting and what? And I imagine it can't be comfortable. No, it's it's uh, extremely. I don't know if I can say shitty, but that's what it is. It, it's it's not excellent. Uh, shooting in a cave is not the, of course, ideal location when it comes to logistics, electricity, and uh, just being comfortable and warm. No, and when you have a naked actor in a cave, that is a bit of a problem, of course. Um, so yeah, it wasn't easy, but it's an actual. It was shot on location for just to catch, just to uh, sort of capture the actual feel of being in a cave. It's like you say, it's pretty terrifying, just because of the isol isolation itself. And it's a film about isolation in a way. I mean, that's one of the bigger themes of the film. And therefore, yeah, we thought it was uh, unnecessary to go on location for those particular shots. Yeah. I'm I, I am amazed uh, with the, uh, the the makeup for the creature of the, the demon that you actually could you talk more about uh, developing that that and um, what actor did you find brave enough to uh, you know go around in his birthday suit? <laughs> for the... Well, remember I told you about my coworker who wanted to make a trailer. He is the uh, actor who plays the monster and had to be naked in the cave and he's also the sound man for the film he was sound man but yeah he he was the uh, brave actor who uh, well was naked in the cave uh, but uh, the uh, idea of the makeup uh, just came from a sketch and i uh, i just did a sketch and then i developed it with uh, stefan jorgen who was the um, uh, special effects makeup guy. It's a latex mask, and uh, it took a lot of work, of course. I mean, being a latex mask, but uh, yeah, we we uh, made a few masks, and uh, we uh, uh, just barely went through the shoot on those masks. Really, it was it was quite exciting. You could say. Now you could you also created a couple of props. Uh, one was being the uh, the egg, which is astonishing. Yeah. I was telling I was telling friends about yeah, yeah that egg. What 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 yeah. is that egg made it made out of? It's made of uh, uh, some plastic uh, thing. I, th I think I think it's poly polyurethane. I, I don't know. Oh. That's I think that's what, that's what they call it. And it's wax. The veins are uh, pieces of string that are covered with wax, just actual wax. Uh, so we, uh, so it's 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 layered. It's a few layers. It's a few layers. Now, did did you did you create the uh, the stone tablet the same way too? And um, and and were those runes actually say anything, or did you just pick a bunch of runes and just plaster them on it? No, no, they actually say what they say in the film. It's actual runes, um, Icelandic runes. Um, but yeah, that's a prop, it's a prop as well. It's a carved out uh, tablet. Uh, it's uh, mainly foam and uh, a bit of... Uh, uh, yeah, it's covered in con concrete then. And then we turned it up, yeah. So it's a few layers as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it wasn't that as heavy as everyone tried to. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Certainly was not. No. Tell, tell me about your cast. Um, I'm casting Vivian and Gunnar uh, um, for the film because uh, they have to show a range of emotions from the start to beginning. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, we did a few. We, we just did casting for Gunnar, Gunnar's role, the role of Peter. And uh, 
Uh, Gunnar was a well, not a known actor. He had one credit to his name, uh, but we felt that uh, he he had a few things going for him that we thought would help him when it came to portraying Peter. He uh, he has certain similarities between himself and Peter the character, and uh, he certainly does have a range of emotions. Uh, Gunnar, the actor himself. Um, uh, Vivian, she was actually close to me at the time. She, uh, we uh, were married at the time. So, um, uh, so I knew her pretty well and uh, what she was capable of. But, uh, uh, but Gunnar, uh, I had never worked with him before. I basically met him in the cast, in the casting itself. Now, this could easily be um, filmed in um, Icelandish rather than English. Why did you choose it to make it as an English film instead? Um, well, um, I wanted to make sort of uh, an ode to horror instead of making um, just an Icelandic film. I wanted to uh, sort of express my love of the genre and uh, I think I am mainly referencing uh, American films, but I'm also referencing Italian cinema, uh, Spanish cinema as well, but uh, not Icelandic cinema. And therefore I felt that uh, I want to sort of construct a universe that uh, had nothing to do with Icelandic cinema, really. Uh, uh, I think, in my opinion, I think the film is more of a, like an Americana, you could say. Mm -hmm. than, uh, than anything else. And I, I thought that that played a big part in the mood, that's, mood of the film uh, uh, since we were referencing these uh, classic horror titles and so on. Well, most excellent. Now, you're also a composer and you composed uh, some of the music and sounds uh, um, and the score uh, for, for this film. Can you yeah. talk about that? Because... Uh, because uh, um, it it really elevated the the, the sense of distress <laughs> throughout the entire. Yeah, movie. well, thank you, thank you. Um, the uh, this, the uh, score is quite influenced by Bernard Herrmann. You know, Bernard Herrmann did a bunch of Hitchcock films. He did uh, Twilight Zone, for instance, uh, with the, the the show, and that has to be one of my favorite scores of all time. And uh, I thought that he was excellent when it came to uh, making all sorts of different moods and uh, doing it with, well, a limited amount of instruments. Um, but I wanted to make something classic in that way, something that sort of was, well, reminded me of Bernard Herrmann, but was more experimental and uh, uh, and my idea is to sort of invite you into a film that is that you feel it should be constructed in a certain way, since it references old cinema, you could say, mm -hmm. but then blow it up. I mean, that's sort of the, the plot itself sort of uh, does that as well. You, you uh, in the beginning, well, early in the film, you, I, I think many people would suspect that it's not as weird as it turns out to be. And I think the music had to mirror that in a way, and and hopefully, hopefully, I was able to do that. No, you you certainly did. And this is your this is your first feature film. How was that overall experience for you? A crazy experience. Uh, it's uh, well, most most films here in Iceland are funded by the Icelandic government. That's the way it is. I mean, we are we are a nation of uh, three hundred and fifty thousand people. Therefore, it's uh, not economically smart to make a film here in Iceland. Really, it's a it's a big risk. Mm. It's a big big risk to make a film for for a, a small town. That's that's what you do. And uh, that was not the case with our film. It did not get support from the government, so we just paid it out of our own pocket, which meant that it took a long time to make it. A long time. We actually started filming filming uh, six years ago, yeah. the year 2015. So um, it's been a slow process, especially the post-production, I have to admit. 
Well, it is a very satisfying satisfying experience uh, for you. That's 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 for certain. Okay, that's good. Now, the uh, um, one of the things I do have to commend is the cinematography. You have experimented with every single type of camera angles. <laughs> I have seen so many yeah. camera <laughs> angles throughout the entire movie. What do you, do you enjoy? Um, you know the experimentations of all the different angles uh, with the cameras. I do, I do. I mean, it's a big part of constructing the universe that the film takes place in, of course. And uh, honestly, to co be completely honest, I never intended of shooting the film myself. I wasn't planning on being the cinematographer. It has a lot to do with the lack of uh, government funding that I mentioned earlier. So you end up doing a lot of stuff yourself. yourself. But uh, I... I myself uh, like a lot of like 70s experimental uh, features and so on. So I'm, I, I am, of course, referencing a lot of those films like Italian horror cinema, uh, Suspiria. I mean, Suspiria was a big influence on film. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I enjoy that. And I really enjoy just um, sort of may, uh, with the camera, you can sort of, box in your audience in, an, in any universe, really. And if, if you box, in, box the audience in strongly enough, he uh, hopefully will go through the right with you because there's no escaping the sort of the borders of the world. And that was uh, what we were aiming for with the cinematography. Yeah. But uh, I hope, uh, hopefully people will like it. I, hope, I, I really hope that people will sort of ex accept the... Um, the bright colors, uh, which is, of course, not the uh, normality of ho horror films, really, today. Mm -hmm. I mean, you usually don't have these broad, uh, these, uh, broad strokes, you could say. So what's up next for you, Alvar? Um, are you, are um, you planning another film? Hopefully it doesn't take six years to do. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, I am planning another film. Yeah. And I really hope that, that, that it will be simpler than this one, or easier, an easier uh, task. Um, and, but yeah, I am planning something and um, I hope that uh, I will get clearer answers in the next weeks or so, if that and when that will happen. Most excellent. Well, hey, congratulations uh, for it hatched and um... Thank you uh, for speaking to us um, across the ocean about the film. And I, I'm sure American audiences will dig it just, just like I did. Um, oh. it, it, is, it, is, it is horrifying. It is strange. But it is just mesmerizing from, from start to finish. So everyone should check this movie out. Well, thank you very much, Kik. Thank you. And thank for your, thanks for your time. Hey, thank you. Hopefully we get to do this again. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.